Hello, hello. Welcome back to Let's Talk Ray Bradbury. If you've not yet subscribed to our channel, please take a moment to do that now. Right here on Let's Talk Ray Bradbury, this project that I've been doing since way back in 2018, I am attempting to read and review or analyze each of the roughly 600 short stories written by Ray Bradbury. Uh, in this current phase of the project, I am working my way through the Cat's Pajama Story, a collection that he released in the early 2000s, I think it was 2004, uh, not long before his death several years later. We are up to the second story in this collection, which is entitled The Island, which was written in 1952, but I don't think it was published um, until this collection, actually. The way that this show works is I do a brief synopsis of what happens in the story, and then I sort of wrap things up with sort of a brief analysis of what it all means to me. Was it a good story? Is it worth your time to read? And hopefully that is of some use to you in your own reading journey. All right, so a mother, an elderly mother, uh, and her three children, two girls and a boy, and their housekeeper are hunkered down in their isolated home in a winter at night. The mother is paranoid, uh, very quite paranoid. Um, each of the room has its own lock from the inside. Uh, the phone lines go from room to room, however, not to the nearby town because she uh, doesn't see fit to be communicating with the outside world. Uh, each member of the family has their own gun in their room, and um, under her pillow is about $40,000, all the family's money, because she's um, paranoid about banks. Uh, one daughter, Alice, thinks all these precautions are silly because an intruder could just go through the window and break um, break in that way. Mother insists that you know that's ludicrous because if they did that, they would alert us to their presence and we would take care of them. But sure enough, one night then, um, as it's snowing gently, they hear a breaking window. Each of the family members retreats to their room and grabs their pistol and lock themselves in. Um, despite all this firepower they have, they are too afraid uh, to come out and to band together. Um, there are gunshots heard from the various points in the room or in the house, and presumably some of these family members are dying. Alice eventually, not wanting to be trapped, um, she jumps through the window and runs to town and gets help. Uh, when she comes back with the police, they notice um, walking straight out the front door is a single set of footsteps, quite small footsteps. Um, Perhaps the door was unlocked, I guess. <laughs> um, so the story does not make a whole lot of sense. And that seems the consensus that I could find in a few bits of conversation scattered around the web where people were trying to talk about this story. And yeah, it doesn't make quite as much sense as I would hoped. Um, it has the makings of a great home invasion story, a little bit of mystery, um, sort of a, a knives out vibe. Um, but, you know, whether by design or by poor writing, you know, maybe perhaps being in need of another revision, it's unclear even, you know, who in the family has died. Is, is Alice the, the lone survivor? Um, Robert certainly seems to have died because it's actually mentioned that he falls to the floor and his heart stops. Um, but it's not <laughs> clear whether it was the gun, a gunshot or um, from fear. Um, but, you know, flaws aside, uh, this is a story about isolation. Uh, the mother's fears have isolated her family from the world, uh, but they're also isolated from one another within this house um, behind each of their locked doors and sort of having this fear that prevents them from coming out. And all their planning um, doesn't allow them to overcome what is apparently a very small challenge. It's a small set of footsteps. Uh, footprints that she notices at the end of the story. So it could have been a child, perhaps, as somebody, a hooligan, breaking into the house. Um, but ultimately, it is their fear um, of the outside world that is their undoing because by being cut out, cut off from the outside world, they are unable to easily reach out to the outside world when help could have come to them. But rather, uh, they must deal with it alone, and apparently they don't deal with it very well. So, yeah, pretty disappointed with this story. Um I'm not really sure what was going on here. Um, maybe, did I miss something? Because um, I'm wondering about these footsteps that she sees at the end of the story. Um, um, do -do 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 -do. I, I was hoping for it to say that the, the footsteps were um, walked right in the front door as if um, for all of this 
this trouble and this worry that they'd forgotten to simply lock the front door. But there was, of course, the crashing of glass at the beginning. Um, I, I had begun to believe, that perhaps, that there was no intruder at all, that it was just the breaking of the glass. Perhaps it was done by a, um, by an, a branch or um, an icicle or something like that. It sometimes happened in the winter, but there's no sign of that. So there's a couple of really good opportunities here that Bradbury could have done something. You know, I think it would have been great if it was clear that this intruder had walked in the front door simply because it, it was unlocked and all the other <laughs> things were locked. And, you know, I'd hope that perhaps he, it was just a mischievous child who, you know, broke a window and then walked in the front door, walked around and nothing really happened. And it was all sort of paranoia, but it doesn't even seem to have that. So that's quite disappointing, really. But um, enough about that. Uh, thank you for tuning in. Uh, if you've got more out of this story than me, please be sure to explain it to me. Um, but next time, um, which will be next Saturday, we'll be talking about Sometime Before Dawn, which was written in 1950. So thank you, and I'll see you again next Saturday. See ya.